To demonstrate how a performance equation tag is created and what its attributes are, what I'd like to do is do a very simple expression, a very simple performance equation uh, using this performance equations plugin. Okay. So let me create a tag and I'm going to create this, just simply call this uh, 0 or O test 1. This is going to be a very simple expression. The expression is going to be the addition or the sum of two pi tags. So I'll use C for the point source and for the point type we would choose a float32 or whatever you know other integer or float that you'd like to use and for the expression this is where we put the expression using performance equation syntax. So for example sinusoid and spell that correctly sinusoid plus CDT 158. These are two pi tags. If I evaluate this, you can see it comes out to a, a number. It's the result. And now that I've specified the equation, I can go ahead and schedule this. Now I'd like to do this as event-based scheduling or as clock-based, or I could choose clock-based scheduling. I'm going to choose clock-based scheduling, in which case I would specify a scan class based on what has been defined in the batch file that we saw earlier. That was the batch file that defines the um, how the interface runs or how the performance equations runs. So let me demonstrate. If we go to Program Files PyPC, or excuse me, Program Files Py in the bin directory. Oh, I'm sorry, that's the wrong directory. It's under Py slash bin and it's called pypesched.bat. This is where we'll see the actual uh, file used for starting up this interface, this uh, calculation engine here. So that slash f stands for frequency. This is the scan class. That's the first scan class, the second scan class, and the third scan class. And this first scan class is going to give me one minute intervals. It's one minute intervals or one minute uh, period with a an offset of zero seconds which means every minute right on the top of the minute. So by choosing scan class of one this will give me one minute scheduling here. And that's really all that needs to be set here. I can set all the other uh, the other attributes the way I prefer. Uh, for example I'll make the span go up to say 500 and once I've saved that let me go ahead and save this calculation. Once I've saved that calculation, at that point uh, I'd like to take a look at what that calculation looks like if we were to just simply look at it as a regular pi point. So I've saved the calculation. Now let's go into the point builder and I'll simply open up this tag called otest1. You'll notice that the tag does exist as a traditional pi point or as a regular pi point. It's connecting to the server. It's going to retrieve that. And we're going to see that it has a point source of C. And in the extended descriptor we have that expression. So it's simply a pi tag in which we've put in the expression in the extended descriptor. And in location 4, which is where we normally put the scan class, that's again where we put the scan class here. So compare the two. The point builder has uh, is just slightly different locations and what we're simply doing with performance equations with this right here is we're giving you a graphical user interface in which we specify the equation using a field called equation and we also give you a tool to evaluate that with and then instead of forcing you to use scan classes we just suggest you use this scheduling field but in every other regard you'll see that the and we, we really could have built this in either place. And we've tried to make it a little easier by providing a performance equations um, a user interface specifically for equations. Now here's another example of a calculation. This time it's going to be uh, scheduled uh, based on a, a triggering pi tag. In other words, it's going to be event scheduled. So when a new value comes into a pi tag, that will trigger this equation. 
Now the equation is going to be simply doing a an average of the tag sinusoid. We'll use asterisk minus one hour for the start time and asterisk for the end time. Yeah, that's the proper syntax. So that I would like to schedule every single time a new event tag gets a value. And the event tag I'm going to choose is sinusoid. So going into scheduling, I'll choose the name of the tag is sinusoid. So what this basically is telling me is that every time sinusoid gets a new value, we will calculate a one hour average for that, for this calculation tag called OTEST2. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, that's all I really need to specify here. I know what the scheduling is and all the other things I can set up as I choose. I'll go ahead and save this. Make, make sure I've got it a float type first or a point type. I'll go ahead and save this. And now again, like we did before, what I'd like to do is just kind of verify what this looks like if we compare this to a looking at this using the traditional point builder. So here we've got this you know, special purpose uh, kind of a plug-in for looking at equations. Now let's take a look at what we look what we see when we switch over to the simple point builder. And for this, let me and we're going to look at O test two. And this is going to go out and find that tag. Once it loads it, we should see that the point source has changed to C. And more importantly, look at the extended descriptor. The extended descriptor is where we have placed all the information required for this calculation. Uh, we use event equals as a syntax at the beginning of the extended descriptor to indicate that this is event triggered instead of uh, triggered based on the the traditional scan class. And then after the delimiter, the comma, we put the expression. So this is how you would configure an event triggered calculation.